Hello friends, today we are going to see how to merge two sorted arrays into a third sorted array. So let's see. See, this is the array 1 and the array 2. These two arrays are sorted and we want to merge these two sorted arrays into this result array which is also sorted. So obviously one option is to merge these arrays and then sort the resultant array but that will take off n log n time complexity but we have a solution which works in of n time complexity. So let's see what is that solution. In this solution we make use of the sorted nature of this array 1 and array 2. So let's see the rules. So this is the pseudocode for merging the sorted arrays. In the pseudocode Variable i will trace the array 1 and variable j will trace the array 2 and you have to declare the resultant array of the size s1 plus s2 means s1 is the size of array 1 and s2 is the size of array 2. So the resultant array will be of size s1 plus s2. Okay, now let's see what is the rule. See, while i is less than s1 and j is less than s2, means i will go up to s1, the size of array 1, and j will go up to s2, the size of array 2. Now, inside while, if array 1 of i is less than array 2 of j, that means you have to find out at this instant, at this position, which element is of less value. Means whether array 1 of i is less than array 2 of j. That's what you are checking. And the element which is less will go to the final array. That is the resultant array. So see here, if array 1 of i is less than array 2 of j, then result of k equal to array 1 of i means in the resultant array the element at i will be shifted means in this case because 1 is less than 2 1 will go to the final array okay and after it goes to the final array see here you have to do i plus plus means the element which shifts to the resultant array is the element pointed by i and that is why i will increment now. If the element at j will get shifted to the resultant array then j would have incremented means once we shift that element you have to increment that respective variable ok. See. Now, because array 1 of i is shifted to the resultant array, i will increment, that is i plus plus. So, i will be incremented. And obviously, you have to increment k, because now at position k, element 1 is stored, now it will increment to the next position. I will give index here 0, 1, 2, 3 and 11. Okay. So, k is incremented to the next position to hold the next element. Now, let's solve the problem with this procedure now. See, check whether array 1 of i is less than array 2 of j, 3 is less than 2, no. So, this condition is not satisfied, we will go in else. That means, element at j is lesser. Okay, means because array 1 of i is not less than array 2 of j, we go in else and inside else, see, array 2 of j will be shifted in the resultant array. Okay, so what is array 2 of j? That is 2. The simple rule is that the lesser element will be shifted to the resultant array. Okay, so 2 is shifted to the resultant array and as per the rule, the element at j is shifted to the resultant array. So, now j will increment. 
and then k will be incremented to hold the next element. Now let's solve it first. See, check whether 3 is less than 4. Yes, it is. So 3 will be shifted to the resultant array and i will be incremented. Okay. Now whether 5 is less than 4. No, but 4 is less than 5. So 4 will be shifted to the resultant array and j is incremented. Now, whether 5 is less than 8? Yes, it is. So, 5 will be shifted to the resultant array and i is incremented. See, don't forget to increment k. I just forgot to increment k from uh, this position. You just keep that in mind. Every time you have to increment k. Okay. So, whether 7 is less than 8? Yes, it is. So, 7 is shifted to the resultant array and i is incremented and again k is also incremented okay now whether 9 is less than 8 no but 8 is less than 9 so we go in else that means 8 will be shifted to the resultant array and j is incremented okay now check whether 9 is less than 10 yes it is so 9 is shifted to the resultant array and i is incremented. So, i becomes 5. And when i becomes 5, see here, i is less than s1 condition fails. Okay, because s1 is 5. The size of the first array is 5. And 5 is not less than 5. Okay, now i is 5 and s1 is also 5. So, 5 is not less than 5. So, this condition fails and as this is the AND condition, we come out of this while loop. Okay, we come out of the while loop and obviously, you have to copy paste all the remaining elements from the second array. See, because i is exhausted now, means the first array is over. Now, obviously, you have to copy paste all the elements remaining in the second array as it is in the final array. Okay. So, all the elements from J to the last position is cop are copy pasted to the final array. So, 10, 11, 12 and 16 are copy pasted. So, that is written here. See, while I is less than S1, but this while will not work because i is not less than s1, i is equal to s1. So, this while will fail and we go to the next while loop. While j is less than s2, while j is less than s2, you have to shift all the elements from array 2 to the resultant array. Okay. And k will be to the last index. So, all the elements are copy pasted to the final array. Now, in some case, j will exhaust first. If j is exhausted first, means j reaches the end of the array and i is still somewhere in the middle of the array, then all the elements remaining in the first array will be copy pasted in that case. Okay. So, whatever the array elements are remaining are copy pasted into the final array. Now, as you can see here, the time complexity will be O of S1 plus S2. See, O of N means N equal to S1 plus S2. Means the size of the resultant array. Because we have traversed the resultant array size. Right? And we can extend this algorithm to merge multiple sorted arrays. Multiple sorted arrays into one sorted array. Hey friends, please subscribe to my channel as I post algorithm videos every day. And if you want a video on any particular topic, then please mention in the comment below. Thank you.